Hey y'all, I am back with a new what's for dinner. First of, I'm gonna be making some pumpkin ricotta stuffed shells. This was my first time making this recipe. I was a little nervous on how it would go over with the family, but it was a big hit. So I started off by boiling up a bag of jumbo shells in some salted water. I cooked those until they were al dente and then I just drained them off. I'm gonna let them chill out in the sink and cool down. So next, I'm gonna grab a bowl and make the stuffing mixture that's gonna go in the shells. So you need two cups of ricotta. I'm just slightly breaking that up so everything will fit in my bowl. I'm adding in a cup of some Parmesan cheese that I shredded myself and I'm gonna grab this 15 ounce can of pumpkin. Now I will be using the whole can in this recipe but for the ricotta mixture you only need a cup. So went ahead and got that measured out and I'm just gonna dump that out into the bowl. I'm gonna crack in one large egg and now I'm gonna start adding in all the seasoning. So we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, a teaspoon of kosher salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a half a tablespoon of garlic powder. The recipe does call for fresh sage. I have never bought that. I don't know if I've ever even had fresh sage. I had this rub sage on hand I think I used that in my chicken pot pie recipe, one of them anyways. So yeah, just use what I had. I just kind of eyeballed some of that in there. And here I'm just kind of folding everything together. I did end up switching on over to a metal spoon to get that really broken up. And then once it all looks mixed, you can move on to the next thing. So I grabbed another bowl. You need a jar of Rayo's vodka sauce. I have never bought a jarred vodka sauce and I've never bought any of the Rayo's sauces. I know it's really popular, but... Yeah, I did blend mine in the blender because I'm just weird about like chunks of onions. That's one of the reasons I've never bought the Rayo sauces because that's an ingredients and this is me trying to branch out. I'm trying to be better. But anyways, the whole jar of sauce and then I added a quarter cup of some heavy cream to it and I just got that all nice and combined. So now that that's all prepped, I can start putting this together. So I grabbed a nine by 13 casserole dish and I'm adding all of that sauce and heavy cream mixture to the bottom. I'm just smoothing it out some with my spatula and then I can just grab my cool down shell and with that same spoon I mix the ricotta mixture with I'm just gonna start stuffing these and then I'm just gonna lay it down over that layer of sauce so you could do this with a popping bag instead of a spoon if you want it to go quicker and smoother but I'm just using the spoon I also want to note that the recipe does call for a whole box or a bag of shells in my case um, but I did have quite a few left over that I didn't know what to do with so just keep that in mind if you don't want anything to go to waste. Um, but I covered this with tin foil and I'm popping it in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. I pulled it out, took the foil off, and I'm just gonna start layering some mozzarella cheese over the shells. If I want my cheese to melt over something, I have been buying the whole milk mozzarella cheese for the last several months and it has made a world of a difference. So good. So once I get that cheese added, Obviously, you can use as little or as much as you want to. I'm going to pop that back into that 350 degree oven for a final 15 minutes. If you want it to be nice and golden brown over the top, you can just flip the ruler on for a couple of minutes. My son is picky about that, so I don't get things as brown as I'd like to. I know it looks better, but obviously, I want him to eat it. So here is my plate. I have four of those shells. I served it with some cheesy garlic toast, and this is some fried corn that I did over the summer that I froze. So I had to thaw that out and heat it up but as for these shells they turn out really good I have been craving stuffed shells for a while now and I just wanted to do something that I hadn't done before it was really nice to do something meatless we haven't done that in a while I also wanted to throw out there that if you're not a fan of pumpkin flavored things then you can just simply leave it out because you can definitely taste it in this recipe this night was Halloween and it was also my daughter's 10th birthday and she specifically requested some buffalo chicken dip and some loaded potato soup. So I'm starting off by making the buffalo dip. I am cutting the recipe in half since it's just the four of us. So I did half of a rotisserie chicken. I threw in one block of room temperature cream cheese. I'm doing a little less than a half a cup of hot sauce, Frank's hot sauce to be exact. And then 
then I'm going to do a half a cup of some ranch. We really like the great value buttermilk ranch, especially in recipes like this. We are not a Hidden Valley fan unless it's the seasoning. That's a different story. But I'm going to grab some shredded sharp cheddar cheese and I'm going to add in one cup. So that's it ingredient wise. I'm just going to fold everything together with my wooden spoon here. This is definitely a bit of an arm workout, but I have learned you do not have to be perfect with this. As it's cooking, I like to go in every now and then and give it a stir and it always works out in the end. So don't worry about it too much. After I'm done with this, getting it to my liking, I'm going to cover it with my lid, of course. And I like to cook mine on high for at least an hour. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer. I mean, it's really just preference, like a preference thing. You're basically just melting everything and heating up the chicken. So now that that's going, I'm going to get started on the potato soup. So a lot of times I make a half batch of this recipe, but my family loves it so much. I'm going to make the full amount. So you need five pounds of russet potato. These potatoes are huge. I weigh them and each potato is like a pound. So I just had to do five large potatoes. I peeled them, washed them, and just chopped them up into little cubes. I put them in my large soup pot and I'm getting them covered with six cups of chicken broth. There are so many potato soup recipes out there. I have a few that I love, but I'm just going with the most basic version that I know my kids really love. But I do recommend no matter what recipe you use to cook those potatoes in the chicken broth because you're not going to drain it. It all stays in there and it just amplifies everything. So I did season the chicken broth and potatoes with onion and garlic powder. I boiled them for about 15 minutes until they were fork tender. Then I lowered the heat and I added in a can of cream of chicken soup, a can of cream of celery soup, and about eight ounces of sour cream. So at this point, I'm just going to stir this, kind of let everything melt and come together for just a couple of minutes. And at this point, I like to go in and add some more seasoning. So I really like Laurie season salt in this dish. I also like to do a little bit of some regular sea salt. Lots of black pepper and potato soup. That's a must for us. So getting that all mixed throughout. And now I'm going to start adding in the cheese. So I'm doing two cups of sharp cheddar. I know it's better to, you know, shred your own cheese. I do a lot of the time, but in this recipe, it turns out good either way. Same thing with a buffalo chicken dip. So I had a very busy day this day, so I, I took the shortcut, but that's it. Once the cheese is melted, you can serve it. It is so simple. And then here is that buffalo chicken dip. We typically serve it with some tortilla chips or even Doritos is really good with it. But Riley specifically requested to have these on some King's Hawaiian rolls. That is her thing, little buffalo chicken sandwiches. So we actually had her birthday celebration like a few days before this where we had her birthday cake and everything, but I wanted to do something for her actual birthday, of course, and one of her favorite desserts is brownies. So I also just made some little iced brownies and we sung to her again. Um, here's my plate. We like to top our soup with extra cheese, bacon, pepper. I've got one of those sliders and everything turned out so good. We all had a plate before we went trick-or-treating and then when we got back, we all had seconds and it was just a really great night and Riley was super happy. Next up, I'm going to make a meatloaf. That has been sounding really good. It's something that we really like. So this is another one of those things where there are several recipes for this that we really love, but I wanted to take it all the way back and use the first meatloaf recipe that I ever fell in love with. When I first discovered this recipe, I made it over and over and over again, but it's been many years since I've made it. So I started off with about one and a half pounds of ground beef. I'm seasoning it with salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. I like to take two eggs and I beat them a little bit before adding it into the meatloaf. And I really like that this recipe calls for oats as the binder really love oats in a meatloaf. It's just so good if you've never tried it. The recipe does call for one and a half cups of oats. I feel like as I've gotten older and a little bit wiser, I have just now realized that I think that's too many oats. Um, I would cut that down to three quarters of a cup or maybe a cup. Um, but yeah, I do a cup of ketchup, 
a splash of Worcestershire sauce and the recipe is always called for a little bit of the Dale seasoning. I've always left that out. Didn't really know much about it but it was at my local save a lot and I know it's popular especially like with marinating steak so I decided to give it a try and I really like it. I'm excited to use that and other things but I just mix that together with my hands and then I'm just going to press it down into my Rachel Ray meatloaf pan. I love this thing. Before prior to have this my only complaint about meatloaf was how greasy it was and how big of a pain it was to remove that so this solves that problem so I pop that in at 350 for 45 minutes and I'm gonna start making the glaze while that's in the oven it's a cup of ketchup a good splash of Worcestershire sauce and I've always done brown sugar but my dad does molasses instead and he makes the best meatloaf so I made that swap and oh my goodness as long as I have molasses on hand that is what I'm going to use it is absolutely amazing it makes the absolute best glaze please try it if you never have so mix that together good until it was nice and smooth I'm just going to cover it with some cling wrap until it's time to pull the meatloaf out which is now 45 minutes in, pulled it out. I'm gonna add all of that glaze and with the back of my spoon, I'm just gonna spread it out nicely over the top and that's gonna go back in for another 45 minutes. So towards the end of that cook time, I'm gonna start making my mashed potatoes. These are gonna be different though. These are gonna be Borson cheese mashed potatoes. I have an eye on this recipe for a while. So I just cooked about two pounds of russets and then I drained them, added them to my bowl with some heavy cream and half and half. I typically only do heavy cream, but since I had some on hand, the half and half, I just threw it on in there as well. I did salt, pepper, a few tablespoons of butter, and the whole block of the garlic, garlic and herb borsen cheese. So, you know, there's so many methods to mixing your potatoes. I've always loved the electric handheld mixer, but I want to start experimenting with other things. Like I really want to try a potato ricer, but these potatoes were bomb. I absolutely love the borson cheese. I would definitely do that again if I have it on hand. And here's that meatloaf once I pull it from the oven. With any meatloaf, you always want to let it rest for at least 10 minutes. That way when you go to slice it, it won't just completely crumble. But as you can see, you just lift that insert out, all the grease stays in the bottom, and I just transfer it to a cutting board and slice it. So here's my plate. I always like to top my meatloaf with extra ketchup. And another thing that I have realized about this recipe, I think the cook time's a little bit too long. These are not things I would have noticed years ago, but I feel like a meatloaf only needs an hour. So 30 minutes without the glaze, 30 minutes with the glaze. But I served it with some green beans, some rolls. These are the Rhodes frozen rolls, and then of course those delicious potatoes. This is one of my favorite comfort meals, and that meatloaf recipe brings back a lot of good memories. This was a night where Josh was off work, the kids didn't have school, and we just had a lazy day, and it felt like we had snacked all day long. So at dinner time, we were hungry, but we weren't as hungry as we usually are. So I also did not have dinner planned out this night. I promise you I'm not perfect at meal planning. I have plenty of those days where I don't know what to make. And we all decided on pizza and we came a hair of ordering Pizza Hut, but I was like, hold up a minute. I can just make it homemade real quick or semi homemade and, you know, save some money. So I am going to be doing it in a cast iron skillet though. This is something I have never done before. So I was excited to try that out. So if you have followed me for a long time, you know I love the Chef Boyardee pizza kits. Love the crust, love the sauce. That's all you get in them anymore anyways. But you know, I just did what the box said with the dough. And then I've got my biggest cast iron skillet that I own out. I drizzled it with a good amount of olive oil and I'm just using my brush to spread that out better and more evenly. And I did it up the sides a little bit too. And then I just plop that pizza dough out and I'm just working it in with my hands so that it will fit the bottom of the pan. And I also want it to kind of go up the sides a bit for the crust. This Classico pizza sauce is a really good one. This one was on its last few days of life, so I really wanted to use all of that up. We do like like extra sauce on our pizza, but even this was a little bit too much, but I don't like to waste. I can't help it. Still came out so, so good. I always like to top my pizza sauce with some Parmesan cheese before I start adding on the shredded cheeses. It makes such a difference, I'm telling you. 
I did the last of my whole milk mozzarella cheese. I had about a cup of that. And then I had a bag open of this like Italian pizza blend from Kroger that's got all kinds of different cheeses in it. And now I'm just going to start layering over some pepperoni. That is the only pizza that all four of us can agree on. So obviously at this point, add any of your favorite pizza toppings on. Um, I know that after making this cast iron skillet pizza, I'm seriously going to have to invest in another cast iron skillet this size so that I can make two on nights that were like really hungry. So we can have two pizzas. And I had a small bag of that fresh ravioli in the fridge and a half a jar of spaghetti sauce. So I did decide to make that for the kids and my husband since I, I knew they wouldn't like the size that I wanted. So I popped that pizza in for about 20 minutes. It took a little bit longer than what I expected. So I went ahead and served the kids their raviolis and grapes so the raviolis wouldn't get cold while they wait on the pizza. And then here's that pizza straight from the oven. I topped it with some dried parsley just for a pop of color. But doesn't that just look so good? I'm telling y'all, I love just a basic, simple homemade pizza anyways. But that cast iron skillet, seriously... It's a game changer. I'm so glad I gave that a try. So here's my plate. I got some ranch to dip the pizza in. And I was really craving some like cold, fresh, raw veggies. So what I had on hand was these mini sweet peppers that I've just been loving lately. And I really love jalapenos with my pizza. This is one of those meals that I could seriously have every week for the rest of my life. And I would be completely happy. I just love pizza. And so does my family. Lastly, I'm going to be trying out this recipe for lemon chicken soup. It's really similar to a chicken noodle soup, but the broth is definitely unique in my opinion, and it's just so good. Crazy good flavor. So I started off with two boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I did slice those in half, and I'm just seasoning those with some lemon pepper seasoning. I'm going to be doing this in my Dutch oven, so I just heated up a couple tablespoons of olive oil, and I'm going to sear these two pieces at a time since that's all that will fit in there anyways so at this point I am going to season the other side with that lemon pepper seasoning and like I said I'm just searing both sides it's not going to be completely cooked through the middle we'll do that later on in the soup so yeah as you can see <laughs> I don't know if it's that seasoning that I use, the Great Value Lemon Pepper, but it was instantly burning to the bottom of my pot, and it was stressing me out bad. Um, I know a little bit of brown is good for flavor, but I feel like that was straight up burnt. I did deglaze the bottom with a half a cup of white wine. Um, I decided not to like scrape up the bits too much because it just didn't feel right to me. Really not sure why that happened. Um, but I did add in a little bit of butter, a couple tablespoons. I threw in about three quarters of a cup of diced carrots. I chopped up two stalks of celery. I did some onion powder in place of an actual onion. And I did a big spoonful of minced garlic just from the jar. And I'm going to saute these veggies for around 10 minutes um, just to let them, you know, start to soften and get tender. I did do all of this over uh, like a medium heat. So here we are after I saute the veggies. I'm adding in seven cups of some chicken broth. I'm also going to add in a little bit of this better than bouillon chicken base just to amplify the flavor. I did a splash of soy sauce and I'm going to squeeze in the juice of one lemon. Next, I'm going to add in a bunch of seasoning. So I already pre-measured out about a teaspoon of some dried parsley, basil, oregano, some mustard powder, and just a pinch of turmeric. So I turned the heat up. I'm waiting for that broth to come up to a boil. And in the meantime, I'm going to start dicing up my chicken. Now, like I said previously, that chicken... Um, was not going to be all the way cooked through. We're about to finish it off now, but I know that doing it like this, it feels really wrong. I really didn't expect for it to be like this undercooked. I know I probably shouldn't have done that on my wooden cutting board. Um, I did. My goal was to do like three minutes per side on the chicken, but where it was burning so fast, I did pull it up a little quicker, but it really doesn't matter too much because like I said, we're finishing it off now. So since that broth was up to a boil, I turned the heat down to more of a simmer. I'm adding back in all of that chicken and I'm just going to let it like slowly boil for about 20 minutes. And I did end up adding my lid to the pot just to 
really ensure that that chicken gets all the way cooked through. So now that the chicken is finely cooked, I'm gonna remove that Dutch oven off of the heat and I'm gonna add in about a half a cup of some shredded Parmesan cheese. So I'm just stirring that a few times to get that cheese to melt. At this point, I went in with a spoon to give it a little taste test to see if it needed any salt and pepper. It needed just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add in about four ounces of some cooked and drained angel hair pasta. Now I will say this pot made exactly enough for us four so if you have a bigger family you will definitely want to I'd say probably double the pasta I feel like the broth and everything else would be fine but yeah if you're a family of above four definitely double the pasta but here is my bowl it came out absolutely delicious my daughter kept on bragging about how good that broth was and I really like the switch up of the angel hair pasta in it compared to what you would do with like a typical chicken noodle soup um I really wish that I served it with grilled cheese but I wasn't thinking but anyways that is going to wrap up the video I really hope you enjoyed it I want to thank you for watching and I will see y'all in my next one